Is overlanding just another fancy word for truck camping? Does a VW Touareg make a great overland beater? Our guest today, he's got an interesting take on overlanding and those who cannot laugh at themselves. Listen along and be prepared. Listen along, be prepared. Listen, listen along and be prepared for some laughs. Hey everyone, it's Wes from 4 before Canada. I grew up in a 4 before family. According to my mom, my first word was Bronco, not mum or mother. Kids had posters of girls or athletes on their walls. I had posters of monster trucks and truck poles and mud boggers. I have over 20 years experience in 4x4 shops and many more than that in the off-road racing circles. I've been involved in 4x4 and racing clubs in BC, Alberta and Ontario. Now I've decided to share my passion with you. I just want to remind everybody about our socials. You can check us out at 4x4CanadaPodcast.com. On Facebook and Instagram, we got 4x4Canada Podcast, as well as our sister channel on YouTube at Vintage 4 before Canada. So our guest today is one of the funniest automotive channels on YouTube. His sarcastic outlook on overlanding is hilarious, in spite of him having a pretty awesome Toyota Land Cruiser that set up pretty good for, well, overlanding. Colin, welcome to the 4 before Canada podcast. Thanks for having me. So Colin has a uh, Vancouver Island-based YouTube channel called Overlanding Overland. Your channel kind of makes a bit of a parody and poking fun at the overlanding world while at the same time you know being an overlander with complete with your own youtube channel you got some great one-liners like how do you tell you're in a room with an overlander and don't worry he'll tell you (laughs) exactly so what made you do a different take or a different approach on your videos compared to all the other big overlanding channels I just thought there was a giant void in the whole overlanding community, especially the YouTube side. Everyone takes it way too seriously, and mm-hmm. there's no reason to take it so seriously. Like, we understand you have all these rigs that no one else can afford because you dumped like a hundred grand into it, but tr- you're going out camping, hanging out in the woods, getting away from society. Just have a good time. Exactly. I, I still have a problem calling, you know, an overlanding. To me, it's just going out four wheeling and camping, and that's what something well, it's truck I truck camping. That's basically what it is. <laughs> exactly. Because overlanding <laughs> implies that you're going out for a month out. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, if you're crossing, you know, Africa, or you're going from you know Alaska down to you know the southern tip of, of uh, South America, then yeah, sure, you know, call it overlanding. But most of the people that are doing this so-called overlanding are weekend warriors, you know, like you myself and myself and they head out on Friday night and they come home on a Sunday night and, and it's overlanding or they might take an extra couple of days off, you know, but no, uh, the, the term has definitely shifted into just camping for some weird reason. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Cause if you have a rooftop tent, you're now an overlander. <laughs> See, I thought maybe you might've done something. Maybe you, you went to the, to the mall and the Jeep boys wouldn't let you hang out with them at the mall. <laughs> And so you're like, screw you. I'm going to make fun of you guys. <laughs> no, I just thought the whole thing, like the whole overlanding community, is, it's just ridiculous at its heart because it's, it's just truck camping. And yeah, like, yeah, they're showing cool places, but why so serious? <laughs> and some people, they get right upset when you say it's just truck camping or it's just, you know, I'm going four wheeling <laughs> and camping, right? It's like, I, yeah, you should, I'm, I'm getting, uh, uh, decals like a wrap design for the side of the canopy it's going to be the, the the youtube well the channel logo and next to it's going to say i can't believe it's not truck camping <laughs> exactly that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome and the big thing is too i mean if you can't have fun doing it right i mean that's what it's all about so in the end you know if you have somebody like yourself's got a you know nice little rig or you got somebody that's got a a five hundred dollar forerunner or somebody has got a you know a hundred thousand dollar rig we're Where all you all... buy a five hundred dollar forerunner let me know <laughs> that's true <laughs> <laughs> we down there you guys have the toyota tax and the island tax <laughs> oh it's ridiculous down here if i if i wanted to i could probably sell my truck right now for fifty five thousand. someone would buy it it's incredible yeah it's incredible 
I actually just got lucky this fall and picked up a, uh, a 2017 Tacoma and I couldn't believe it actually was low mileage and the price was like below what was on the market. I couldn't believe it. I was walked right into it. But yeah, the Toyota tax is just huge, especially on the island. Mary That's right, because if it leaves the island or comes on the island, it adds an extra thousand bucks for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no doubt. So let's talk about your Land Cruiser. That thing is a tank. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the Land Cruiser, it's a 1989 Toyota Land Cruiser 60 Series. Uh, I specifically wanted this one. Unfortunately, it's right-hand drive, but you get over that. It's because of the powertrain option. It came from factory. It has an inline six turbo diesel. Yep. And I just like diesel. I refuse to own anything that's gas. <laughs> and if it is gas, I'll just end up destroying it because it has a gasoline engine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 The, um, the, you get used to the right hand drive. I've got a few friends who have had a couple of right hand drive cruisers here up in the interior and, uh, you get used to it. It's still, throws you off a little bit you know when you're out wheeling with them and you go to the go to say something on uh in their window and you're at the wrong door but <laughs> i i still <laughs> jump in the wrong side sometimes because i'm because i i uh, drive a tow truck as a profession so yep. i'm always like forgetting which side i'm supposed to jump into the cruiser <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> nah, kind of not really <laughs> <laughs> i meant to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just play it off when you're out camp. He's like, everybody looks at you. He's like, is he retarded? <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I would just seen if you guys were paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the cruiser, just for our listeners that may not know it offhand, it started as a cruiser, a wagon style cruiser, and yeah. then you chop the back off. And went to a tray, sort of like a Australian Aussie Overlander. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And yeah. So uh, the, the whole reason behind that: um, one drunken night, two Halloweens ago, me and my buddy Jeremy were at the campfire out up island somewhere, and I was complaining. It's like I didn't want to fix the roof rust because I'd be just spending money on restorations and I wanted to get mods done. So we came up with a plan that we just turned my truck into the dirty 30 like Shano's truck from four-wheel drive action. So we cut the roof rust out and then built an aluminum tray and he put a six-inch lift in it and a whole bunch of other little custom things. And he just completed the uh, aluminum canopy a month ago. Yeah, I saw that. That looks really sharp, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're a full blown Overlander. I mean, you've yeah, got a Overlander stove. In, yeah, you've got a stove in there. You got a fridge in there. I mean, you've got all kinds of room for everything. It's yeah, rooms for activities. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now let's flip back to that. Um, let's flip back to that tour egg. Like I say, I watched it again the other night, both a uh, couple of the episodes, and uh, that was just awesome. So he basically picked up this tour egg for three hundred dollars, if I remember correctly. Basically, yeah, yeah, and just I was gonna say modded that to be an Overlander kind of rig, but yeah. he, and, and he then just you went put out big tires on it for a paint job. That was it, <laughs> <laughs> and washed it inside at the car wash it was so gross in that thing like even <laughs> after we pressure washed the entire interior you could still smell the black mold it was just stuck in the, the thing like i even <laughs> I, like the first episode for the twarag series i uh spray painted over the mold with beige spray paint to match the interior color <laughs> i saw that that's awesome i just can't imagine i mean was there anybody at the car wash when you guys are pressure washing the inside of that no we were kind of like <laughs> No one really goes to that one, so I, I was hoping we'd be like around a lot of people so we could get like some expression shots, but no one was around. <laughs> that thing was kind of we. That thing only happened because the uh, cruiser was up with uh, Jeremy getting built, so I needed a vehicle, and we decided to grab this for cheap and go full whistling diesel on it. 
Well, I have to admit, it's the first time I've ever seen a Turag on 35s with no lift. I mean, right. <laughs> that was just pure genius. And then, <laughs> you know, the, the snorkels. I mean, you got not just one snorkel, because one's not enough for a Turag. No, you need to have no, two. Exactly. Two intakes. Yeah. So, I mean, to be a real overlanding Turag, you got to have two snorkels, right? So Yeah, made out of conduit that aren't connected to the air boxes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds like some real good redneckery. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, you know, honestly, that thing looked like you guys had so much fun. Like... It was a blast because it had the V8 in it. So you had like 305 horsepower. We didn't put that thing in low range once. We just like hit the skinny pedal and took off like a rocket. Yeah. What happened to the Touareg? You guys just scrap it? Well, the Land Cruiser was done and there was no reason to continue. Yep. And the week that everything was going to be, when I was going to have the Land Cruiser and we're going to uninsure the Touareg, Whistling Diesel released an episode where he brought a squatted truck to a scrapyard and they used the giant claw to like throw it around. It's like, holy shit, I want to do that. So I got on the line with my friend that works at the uh, local scrapyard. It's like, yeah, bring it down. Nice. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah, he just tossed it around like a toy for half an hour. Yeah, it made for some really cool coverage for sure. For yeah, sure. he pissed off a lot of Volkswagen owners. Oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but mind you, when you started doing some of your sweet mods to it i think you pissed off a lot of people then too so <laughs> well you mean the putting self tappers in a fender isn't good i, I think mean, it's you're a genius i thought hold it i mean self tappers <laughs> is a great way to hold the trim on right like i thought that was perfect yeah that just to <laughs> totally made sense to me right but <laughs> so yeah, exactly growing up around the farm we had a couple different vehicles and stuff like that and we had a toyota station wagon and I beat that thing as a teenager out in the fields and stuff like that. And you couldn't kill it. Some of these cars are just built so tough, right? So, yeah. And that's half the time. That's where I actually learned how to drive at speed, even though we're not supposed to be going at speed and <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that, right? So it was uh, definitely a good time. One thing that I have noticed on your videos, or I haven't noticed on your videos, is. A Tembo Tusk. You don't have a Tembo Tusk yet. I actually had to look up what that meant, and I realized we were talking about a Scuttle. Scuttle, so that's what it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Scuttle. Yeah. So, fun fact, we're in the early design stages of making a two-in-one Scuttle toilet, but I highly doubt it'll leave the prototype stage. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why either. It's a great idea. You get to end up having either a real hot ass or <laughs> uh, just an awful meal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Throw that in a wrap, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you guys get try and get out, obviously as much as you can over on the island, and you know we all know that there's limited you know areas on the island just with things shut down. But yeah, you see, with, you see, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which we won't go there. We won't get into the whole political thing, but. Um, love seeing you guys getting out and, you know, enjoying what you can on, on the island. What does truck camping mean to you? You know, as a, is this something that you've always been into, like, you know, growing up in that, or is it something that came on recently in your life and you just sort of embraced it? Truck camping. Um, I just kind of like, I'm at the point in my life where I don't like being in crowds. I want to be as far away from people as I possibly can. And it's yep. just the hobby itself is relaxing and it's in, there's excitement. It's like, do I, am I going to tip the truck on this one line? Am I not? I don't know. Yep. I haven't tipped the truck yet. So I'll just knock on wood. So <laughs> yeah. Just getting out there and enjoying it with, you know, even if you are with a few people, but I, I hear you as, as I get older, I, I like people less, you know, as, um, the older I get. Yeah, crowds the, suck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the older I get, the, the less and less I like people, right? So, um, but I've found that, you know, I've got some good core people around me and, and love spending time with them. But, you know, getting out where I can't do the provincial parks very well, just 
because there's like 400 other campers. Well, there's so many rules too. Like you got to put your fire out by 10 p.m. and then that's it. Yeah. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's just when you're getting going, right? So. Well, some nights, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It was funny. We were camping last night and uh, we've got the campfire ban up here and it was definitely different sitting around a empty or a non flame campfire kind of idea, right? We're sitting around a pit, just sitting there talking, which is great. We still had a great time. It's just so different not having a fire. Yeah, the fire just adds that extra ambiance. Like it, you're entertained between conversations. Yeah. It's kind of like putting a TV on when people are over. Yeah. Having the background noise going. Exactly. I've, I've found that for myself, it, I've done actually quite a bit of solo camping this year for a change. And that's been uh, quite interesting, but it, yeah, it's different being uh, with yourself with your own devices alone. Yeah, and a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people can't to do the solo camping. Cody from Whistling Diesel, did he ever respond to your video? He never responded, but I didn't think he was going to. <laughs> I mean, I did put the video out there and did get a, a ton of views, which I wasn't expecting. So I'll take it as a win. Yeah. Yeah, Besides, really he's good. got some court stuff happening to him right now in the States because of uh, no splashing or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just for the reader or the, the listeners, sorry, Colin put out a video basically it's not, not really calling out Whistling Diesel, but kind of calling out Whistling Diesel because <laughs> Cody put in one of his videos that he was, you know, they're talking about invading Canada. British Columbian specific. Yes. <laughs> it was pretty funny. It was a real good you know, parody or outtake on it. And it was just funny the whole way through. Where do you guys get some of your ideas for some of your videos? I imagine, you know, a pretty funny guy, you know, offhand, right? But it obviously just doesn't, yeah. you know, at least for me, I wouldn't think it would come all that naturally to be putting out one-liners, you know, maybe just because I'm not a funny guy. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess it just comes from, uh, from like what i find entertaining so like rick and morty and like a whole bunch of adult cartoons just things that are kind of edgy i'm a big fan of whistling diesel so i like take a a few ideas from him from time to time but yeah like mostly uh some the video you'll that's coming out next week and the one prior there was no script but the whistling diesel video and a few other ones were scripted i wrote everything pre-hand before we went filming yeah 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 even when you're going out and you're you're getting coverage, you got to have a good idea what you're doing, anyways. But don't drink beer while you're filming. <laughs> See, that just makes it better, doesn't it? Like this is making it funnier it, for it everything. Just falls apart because you forget to film stuff, and it's like, oh great, I need to do a whole bunch of reshoots, and then three people left, and I can't do the reshoot with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things I've really found with podcasting is i'm getting really good at editing and taking out all my stupid ass comments that i think about after that i'm like (laughs) that seemed funny at the time but it was not funny (laughs) yeah there's a lot of stuff that doesn't go in my videos because of that i think it's hilarious i think the scene's gonna work out great it's like wow that's horrible straight to the dumpster yeah and then you know then like you say we can get rid of our ums and our uhs and all those uh... um uh, 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 you know, um, you know, do you, do you actually feel smarter when you're sitting there scratching your head? Kind of, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> One nice thing about the editing is I've I've done some videos too, and I'm like, I don't know how you guys do. I mean, you got to shoot so much to make it work. Well, maybe that's just me. Well, yeah. at the beginning, it, w- it was kind of tough because, like, I kind of knew what I wanted to portray in the video, but I didn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. So, like, the first few videos, you can see the progression from where the channel began last year and where we are now. Yep. And it's just going to, I just keep getting better and better at what I want to, like, direct out into the video. And yep. I'm sure next year I'll watch the video from last year. And it's like, wow, that, I feel so awkward watching this. I look like a retard. Yep. Yeah, it's the same same here. I'm sure that, you know, like every episode of the podcast is getting better and better. And 
but I'm sure, you know, a year out from now, I look back at, you know, the first five or something like that. And it's like, oh my God, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just part of the evolution of it. Oh you yeah. Can't get away from it. Exactly. When you guys are, out, when you're out camping in that, are you a hot dogs kind of meal or, or do you actually flare up a full blown meal and sit around the campfire with something real, you know, fried f- or fish and all the, you know, all the meal. Well, I actually eat better when I'm out camping because mm-hmm. when I'm at home, I just eat like trash. And when I go camping, I'm like vacuum sealed steaks from Walmart. It's my favorite. Exactly. Because <laughs> that way you don't have any blood anywhere. <laughs> yep. Unless you cut yourself. Well, no, there, there's a little terrace spot, so you can't cut yourself. Oh, well, I probably could. Okay. <laughs> Let me know how it goes next time. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, I find quite often, too, I'm I'm either two extremes. I'm either a craft dinner meal over the over the camp stove, or else I'm, you know, like you say, a, a full, a good eaten meal and, and that. So it all depends on how how I feel, I guess, when I'm packing. <laughs> Yeah, I might have to like eat craft dinner on the expedition because I keep spending money on this canopy to try to get it ready for the expedition. Yeah. Every funny. time I go work on it, I'm spending like three to four hundred bucks. Craft dinner and hot dogs. <laughs> now nah, maybe I'll just eat some uh, some Mister Noodles <laughs> ramen. <laughs> exactly. You can uh, you can actually make some ramen pretty darn good. Throw in some vegetables in there, and you're all set. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, as a overlander, what <laughs> <laughs> what would you say would be your uh, top three recommendations for vehicles for people getting? I guess more people want to get out wheeling and stuff like that. If you yeah, would... so like for beginners, like the the main thing that you would want to focus on getting first is uh, a two inch lift, thirty three inch all terrain tires. And a winch. Yep. Yep. That's the, the, the basics, right? So. Yeah, that's all you need to go really see what you want to see. Yep. And get getting out there, it's you know, it, it's it's funny. I've had a, a lot of vehicles. I got friends who have had a lot of different vehicles, and they almost got to learn how to drive again when they get into a different vehicle because they're so used to driving their modded vehicle out that they forgot how to drive a real, uh, a normal vehicle. Right. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you hundred percent on that. The small lift and a winch is some people say winch first. Some people say lockers first. If the vehicles are no, it's always light bars. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I never did understand the whole light bar thing. I have to admit I've, I don't have any light bars and I've survived fine for the last 50 years without a light. Yeah. Bar, like but... unless you do like night wheeling all the time, which makes no sense. Cause by the time that you need a light bar in the summertime, it's like almost 1130. Yeah. 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 It's like, there's no point. Yeah. I can see it maybe, you know, in the, up in like in the winter time, if you're doing some winter wheeling or whatever, and it gets, it starts getting dark around three or something like that. But, but then again, then you got to be winter wheeling, and I'm not a huge fan of the snow and the winter. And neither is my Land Cruiser. It's been broken down both winters so far since I've got it built. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I can't blame it. I mean, it's winter time, right? <laughs> I can't blame it at all. But yeah, light bars. I'm just yeah. I other than maybe winter stuff. Although one thing I have found that I want to I want to change some of my fog lights and add some rear lights and into going into amber lights because it just makes it so much easier in the dust. Yeah, it does. Yeah. The amber lights, uh, the red lighting, it's great for uh, camping because it will actually deter the bugs from going to the camp. Oh, I didn't think of that. So, so speaking of camping, what are three camping must-haves that you didn't really think that you must have? but you've discovered that you must have. Well, the, the three main things that work for me, I, I like to make sure that I'm always able to stay dry and warm. So an ax, a chainsaw, and a tarp are my three must-haves to go camping. Yeah, excellent ideas for sure. Because with all three of those, yeah, you can keep dry, you can keep warm, 
and there's nothing worse than camping in the rain and you're cold and that's right. You just set up the the, the uh, chainsaw in the air, and then you use the tarp to cut the wood. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You guys get so much dampness down there. Do you find starting fires sometimes can be a little rough? Uh not really. Like, uh, you just gonna make sure you you grab the right wood and like have a good base going. Yeah. Like lo- our go to if we were like winter camping is try to find some red cedar. Right start off with that yeah i had uh i know i had one fire this spring that just everything was just so wet it was just it was horrible <laughs> but i mean if you have enough gasoline then you can make any fire go right that never works i, I always <laughs> throw gas on the fire it's like come on light it up it's like and then 10 liters later it's like wow i still don't have a fire and it cost me 100 bucks <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, that's the problem is you're using diesel instead of uh, gas. Well, no, I've got the the, the gas for the chainsaw, but uh, right. I sometimes do use the diesel off my cruiser because I can pump it up from the verge pump, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I'm really in a bind, but uh, the new camping setup is going to have a Tiger Torch, so I won't have to worry about that. There we go. <laughs> that's perfect. That's what every camper needs is a Tiger Torch. Are you going to do it so you can strap it on your back, too? No, it'll be just off of the uh, ten pound propane tank. Going back to camping and four wheeling, what are some of the camping and or four wheeling etiquette things that just drive you crazy? People that leave their trash behind, like just pick up your stuff, pack out what you packed in. That's the biggest. Yep. The, the second one's the the campers that show up to a site and try to block off the whole thing, even though you can fit like fifty different people down there for different campsites i run into that a lot on the uh san juan river this past summer people would just like put the gate up or like block the, the whole trail of vehicles which in that case i would just hook up my winch and winch them out <laughs> the, the the trash is a big thing for me it's just common decency right but like yeah. you say you know i found the last couple of years it seems to be more people they'll just like you say they'll camp almost in the middle of a road almost sometimes right and it's like oh, i've run into that like tons of times like i try to go like do some uh, exploring some of the offshoots off the main yeah and i get to a certain spot and there's like a tent and like three vehicles blocking the whole road and i show up and start honking at them and, this, and i get people screaming at me because i'm waking them up <laughs> it's great seeing more and more people out these days but there seems to be sometimes a lack of etiquette or smarts maybe on it but it's okay they'll figure it out yeah yeah. one day yeah when you start laying on their horn and (laughs) (laughs) other than your land cruiser is there a vehicle that you regret selling i i don't really get attached to vehicles but i've owned like 40 plus since i've been 17 i'm 37 now so 20 years 40 vehicles roughly yeah, you don't get but, attached. <laughs> no, but but this one, I think I'm going to keep for a long time. And if I do sell it, I probably will regret it. Yeah. It's been a big part of your life the last year or so, right? So. Yeah. It, I mean, the whole channel was the, like, I started the channel to try to pay it off quicker. But then I didn't realize that you couldn't make money off of YouTube until you hit a certain point, which I'm about to hit like in a month or so. Yeah, you just hit a thousand subscribers recently, eh? Yeah, exactly. I'm at uh, ten fifty-five right now, and I'm missing five hundred hours of watch time before okay. I get monetized. Well, we'll have to get everybody out there. You know, overlanding, overland, which you know on YouTube. Yes, three exactly. words: overlanding, overland. Land, exactly. People will find it. They'll find it exactly. We'll throw some sh- some uh, some. We'll throw some things in the bottom. <laughs> We'll throw, <laughs> we'll throw some links in the in the bottom there, and people will find it no problem. So that's awesome. I mean, it's a lot of work to go, you know, to even to get your first thousand. But it's yeah, it was a lot of work. And, like the only reason I'm at that is from the Twarag series. We got, I think, four hundred subs just from those five episodes. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then, of course, the whistling diesel one. There is, you know, that was a fair number from that one but that one didn't really like uh do probably... so well for the subs yeah i only got five subs off of that one 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I can imagine you get a lot, you know, like say you got lots of views, but the subs didn't come in into play. Right. Yeah. So, which is understandable. They're, you know, they're searching for whistling Dixie. They're not really searching for you. Right. So, yeah, and then my face pops up. It's like, who's this ugly mug? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's a lot of work, and you know, I got a lot of friends that got some channels, and it's a lot of work. But congratulations on you! It's Thank not you. A, not an easy thing, but I, I think that yours is different, and I think once more and more people start to see it, it's definitely going to get bigger for sure. Just because of the outlook on the channel, the making fun of you know overlanding. And, you know, you also have some good you know drone work in there, like every overlander should have in their videos, but. You have to have it, even if you're being sarcastic about it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, the places I go to are majestic, so I want to capture that and share it to the viewer. So it's kind of, yeah, it's just what the channel is. I make fun yeah. of myself. I make fun of everything. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, if you can't make fun of yourself, I mean, there's so many people in this world that can't make fun of themselves, right? So if you're taking... That's right. Look, so tight. Ooh. You got to be able to, you know, sit back and look at yourself and laugh at yourself, because... Otherwise, you're just going to be a stress ball the rest of your life, right? So, That's right. So what Canadian would you like to hear on the 4x4 Canada podcast? I'm glad you asked, Wes. You should contact my friend Matt Yeoman from Toyota World Runners. Yes. Yes. He is on my hit list. I love their channel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was mentioning, I was asking him the other day to see if he ever got interviews. Like, no. <laughs> I thought it was super weird that I've already got two interviews and I'm not really being serious about it. Yeah, but you're funny, right? His videos are absolutely awesome, him and his girlfriend. Especially yeah, that, exactly. it's that, stuff. that that chill coat and run that they did. Um yeah. that was just beautiful. And and he's got a ton of subscribers as well, too. Yeah, he's up to he's up there now. He's like in the tens of thousands. I definitely want to get uh, definitely want to get him on board. Been a real fan of their stuff, and I'm I'm a bit of an old school guy, so I mean I love their I love the Toyota, you know, compared yeah, to all second these. Gen, the Yeti. Yeah, the Yeti. You know, the fact that you know he's running old school and taking it up, like say, all over the island and all over up into the Chilcotin. That series was, like I said, that was a wonderful series. Yeah, I did. He's definitely on my list. For sure. So great suggestion for sh for sure. Anybody else you can think of down there? <laughs> there is Outlast Overland. He's in Souk. Okay. He's a smaller channel. We yep. started at the same time, and he keeps being jealous that I got more subs than him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's probably also kind of Dylan. Kind kind of probably kind of jealous of the uh, Land Cruiser as well, too. Oh no, he's a a Colorado guy. He's got a brand new diesel Colorado. I'd still prefer the Land Cruiser. Well, they'll tell everyone they should buy a Land Cruiser because then they'll just jack up the price to a million bucks for each of them. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> well, Colin, I really appreciate you coming on board. And again, we'll throw your link down in the comments below. Love the channel and love the uh, love the sense of humor on it. It's nice to uh, see somebody who's not so serious about everything. And uh... As you should be. <laughs> exactly awesome <laughs> beautiful right, appreciate, appreciate you coming on man yeah take care okay